Welcome to The Best of Our Knowledge, a program focused on education, learning, and research. Recently, Casanova College, a private school in upstate New York, announced it would close after the spring 2023 semester. On this episode, we'll speak with college president David Berg about the decision, and we'll have a conversation with a student who is preparing for the change. It's all next on The Best of Our Knowledge. You're listening to The Best of Our Knowledge. I'm your host, Lucas Willard. Casanova College, a small private college in upstate New York, announced on December 7, 2022, that it would close after the spring 2023 semester. The shutdown comes just a year shy of the college's 200th anniversary. The college was initially founded in 1824 as the Genesee Seminary. As campus administrators prepare for the shutdown of the college that has struggled financially, students are wondering what's next for their higher education. The college is working to establish teach-out agreements with other regional institutions, both private and public, so students may continue their college careers elsewhere. To get more information on the announcement, I spoke with Casanova College President David Berg, who told me the college is not alone in its struggles. We are kind of in the, the definition of being in the bullseye of of uh, schools that met all criteria uh, for challenge prior to COVID. Uh, you know, as you look at um, demographic trends, particularly in the Northeast and the and the continued fall off of traditional college age students, again we we meet all the criteria that were out there for concern. We're a small private institution in a semi rural environment um, with a small endowment and uh, highly enrollment dependent. And again, in the Northeast where um, all of those issues are exacerbated. So uh, so we had had our challenges beforehand and we navigated uh, a number of them, including um, the Excelsior Scholarship a few years ago, which was, you know, as you know, free tuition at the SUNY institutions, which in principle, I don't have any objection to because I'm a, a firm supporter of of uh, maximizing access um, to higher education, but obviously, from a from a competitive standpoint, that was something that challenged us, especially because it came out right in the uh, right in the midst of a recruitment cycle a, a couple of years before COVID. But nonetheless, I think um, so. So yes, we knew we had our challenges. We knew we needed to change, to pivot, to reinvent ourselves, and I think it had some really good planning work in place to to do so. And unfortunately, as with COVID, as you know, I mean, there are just so many um, negative elements to that. I mean, the obvious being that our enrollment uh, dipped further at a time where we had just been starting to see a little bit of enrollment recovery prior to COVID. Uh, we felt good about where we were going with our, our recruitment efforts, but, but COVID, uh, as with most institutions, we took a significant drop in enrollment for several cycles. And that's the kind of thing that takes years to build back from. And at the same time that we were taking an enrollment hit from COVID, it also increased our expenditures and all the things we needed to do related to being able to reopen during COVID and keep students safe. And I have to say, you know, that's one of our proud points is that we uh, we did navigate COVID on ground remarkably well, uh, uh, staying in person starting in the fall of 2020 with no with no outbreaks and uh, because we really managed that thoughtfully and carefully. But that took a lot of expense. And beyond expense, obviously, it also took a lot of time and attention. So for for a couple of years, uh, particularly early on, uh, all of our administrative uh, time, focus, energy, and attention was on uh, managing the campus through COVID as opposed to uh, giving the energy and time to these new initiatives that we knew we needed to ultimately pursue. Do you believe that small private colleges like CAS are all in the same boat, especially with a school that is a tuition-driven institution. Are the challenges that are facing Casanova facing colleges across the country? Yes, yes. Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, we're not the first college that's hit this point or this circumstance, and I'm, I'm afraid we likely won't be the last. Um, you know, what I'm what I would hope is that other schools that are in our situation do have. Uh, 
more planning time than we did to try to avert the situation. And again, through pursuit of things like uh, partnerships, uh, mergers with other institutions. Um, but absolutely, I think, um, you know, small colleges like ours, again, particularly in this region, are extremely challenged. And it's um, and it's a shame because I think that there's a misperception, too, um, uh, in terms of about who private colleges serve. And I think that that issue came out in the conversation around even around the time of the Excelsior scholarship is thinking like, oh, this won't harm uh, independent schools all that much because they serve a different student demographic than 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 the publics do and 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 that's not the case. I mean, we have a, a majority of our students are, are first generation students, first in their family to to go to college. So I think a lot of private colleges across New York and across the country are part of uh, the access the the network of colleges that provide access to uh, to students. And I think it's critical um, uh, that access because. Um, the the value and importance of a college degree is more important than ever. I think uh, you know there's a lot of uh, narrative out there in popular media around that questioning the value of, of of the degree. But I always frame it you know less in terms of the uh, the projected difference in lifetime income and more in terms of it enabling you to pursue your options and really um, pursue your interests in a way that you, you're not able to without that degree and. Uh, there's no indication of that changing, and when you look at data of, of coming out of COVID, of uh, you know around job losses and and um, who 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 sustained that period better. I mean, folks with degrees came through that period uh, in much better shape than those without. So, so a college degree can really be um, um, can really enable uh, individuals to break out of of multi generational sometimes cycles of of poverty and um and underrepresentation in the economy and so you know I think it's a real shame anytime an institution like ours goes away you're losing one more point of access and I do have a real concern that uh you know that as I say that we won't be the the, the last President Berg I wanted to talk about the students and the faculty and staff, but starting with the students, what's Casanova College's plan right now for helping students finish their studies, especially students who might have only had uh, one year left? Yeah, so students who are close to graduation, we're going to do everything we can to work with them to get them finished up so they can earn that credential here uh, this spring. Uh, for students uh, who have, who, you know, would not be within a semester or close to um, graduation, we're committed to working with each and every one of them individually to find them an appropriate landing place in a, in a, in a comparable program at another institution. And uh, you know, to that end, we've engaged in teach-out agreements with a number of colleges. I, I don't know the number of them we're up to today. It's, it's certainly more than a dozen, but um, and, and many other institutions uh, daily reaching out. Um, wanting to formally partner with us, um, and so we want to present our students with those. The, the benefit of those formal agreements is you do those to to maximize um, uh, the, the the credit transfer for for students from one institution to the other to kind of make that as seamless as possible, and to um, ideally have have aid award packages that are comparable so that a student can go to another institution to finish up. Uh, at a similar cost and with their credits going with them and, and in, into a school with, with a comparable academic program. And, you know, with students that have more unusual or, or rare programs, uh, you know, we're working with them, we'll work with them on an individual basis to find them uh, an appropriate destination. How has the conversation gone with faculty and staff members about assisting them find additional employment? You know, we're going to do everything we can for for our employees who have just been extraordinary uh, under these circumstances. I think, you know, one of the things that's just been so impressive to me, I mean, we pride ourselves on being a tight-knit community here, a very supportive community, and our faculty and staff, um, you know, the moments after kind of taking in this news themselves, because obviously... Uh, we're all affected. They're all affected personally uh, and professionally by this, but really pivoted immediately uh, to how to best support 
students in this transition. And so we've got some exceptional folks here, uh, and I'm, I'm getting the word out to anybody who will listen, who anybody who's looking for uh, uh, for folks in professional, um, skilled uh, trade areas, all the way to you know to, to faculty and in, in, in various uh, specific disciplines. Um, we're we're going to do a number of things. I think um, you know we're going to offer throughout the uh, this winter and spring semester. We're going to offer professional development opportunities uh, to our employees that run a range uh, from some of them being more traditional kind of career service offerings, assistance with um, interviewing and, uh, and and resume building. In some cases, for some employees, uh, assistance with development of, of of some computer skills and software skills to help them be more employable. Mostly, I think we can all be, we're all going to be uh, strong references for the folks who work here. And we've been hearing from uh, a number of other colleges and other employers here in the region who are looking for skilled folks uh, with with interest. We've been actively promoting that. I mean, I, you know, we, we established a um, an email address, hr1 at casanova.edu, where employers could reach out who are, um, who have, have specific needs and uh and we've been promoting that i you know i i put a personal linkedin post out of, uh, about that and we're hearing from uh uh from a lot of institutions and you know in, in in the process of talking with a lot of colleges about the teach out agreements which are obviously focused on students in the course of those interactions we've also heard from a lot of our our fellow uh higher ed institutions about needs that they have and interest in interviewing and and um potentially hiring some of our, our faculty and staff. And so um, we're talking with a lot of colleges about potential agreements wherein we have folks that we need here for the spring, stay here for the spring, and then be able to transition potentially into a position at some of those other institutions afterward. I'm sure that there's a lot of work that needs to be done between now and the end of the next semester. Will there be any other assistance that you'll be seeking as the college ultimately prepares for closure? Yeah, there's, uh, you know, what I will say, so during the fall, as as it became clear, late, later fall, that, that this might be the unfortunate uh, eventuality we'd be facing, we found ourselves working hard on two planning fronts at, simultaneously, and one was our continued planning for what the future would look like and what we needed to prioritize if we were going forward, and the other being... Uh, how we would, um, you know, best serve all of our constituencies, primarily our students, if, if, uh, if unfortunately we were not able to to move forward. So, you know, now we know, uh, now we know that outcome, and so now our planning moving forward, and and we're in new territory. I mean, let me just be clear about that. I, I've never closed a college before. Uh, no one working here, no one on our board has ever cl- closed a college before. Uh, I've had incredible reach out from uh, the higher ed community with offers of support, including colleagues who have been in similar institutions and uh, know firsthand of all the kind of unpredictable uh, you know, challenges that come up on a daily basis. So we're learning as we go, but I feel confident that um, in our planning efforts, um, you know, we're going to continue to keep our students and our and our people foremost in the in the front of that in terms of everything we do, looking at it in terms of how we best uh, serve them. So, on the one hand, we're going to be doing a lot of active planning for uh, assisting students and employees in the spring. Uh, some of the you know the, the job workshops and things like that, or professional uh, planning workshops, like I mentioned, with employees. We're going to be doing similar things with students. We're going to be organizing, um, you know. Uh, transfer fairs here on campus with representatives from other institutions. We're going to keep working with other institutions uh, on streamlining pathways for our students. So that's, and then there's a lot of legal compliance accreditation uh, 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 matters that need to be dealt with as well as as part of the the shutdown. But in the middle of all that, we also really want to prioritize having a spring semester that feels as much like a normal spring semester as we as we can make it we want uh you know we had a faculty member it was very very poignantly shared that um she had told her class you know if this is going to be our last spring let's make it our best spring ever and i think um uh, once everyone kind of 
gets past this initial point of, of uh, the absorption of the news and uh, working through that, I'm hoping that that's the uh, that that's the, the the theme with which we can embrace this spring is like let's make this the best spring semester for our uh, for our students in our community. Let's do all the things that we normally would do in a, a spring semester. Let's try to make it um, as good of an experience as we can for everybody, while at the same time we're helping them prepare for where they're going to go next. David Berg is the president of Casanova College in Casanova, New York. The private college is preparing for closure ahead of the fall 2023 semester. You're listening to the best of our knowledge. You're listening to the best of our knowledge. I'm Lucas Willard. As Casanova College prepares for closure, students are wondering where they will continue their studies. Third-year student Alaya Rivera says the news is disappointing. She told me students first caught wind of the interruption in October of 2022 after a news article described the college as having an uncertain future amid fiscal challenges. And so that was kind of surprising to everyone because no one had any clue about that. And so that obviously caused a lot of panic in the school, a lot of people wondering if they should be transferring. And the student government actually met with President Berg um, to get answers for the student body. And so they never confirmed or denied anything, but everything that we heard from our higher ups was basically, don't panic right now. We don't know anything. You shouldn't be trying to transfer or trying to look for other options. As far as we know, CAS is continuing. So that was a little bit reassuring. Um, and then a little while after we see that we're not doing tours anymore. So that's like, okay, something's going on. And that was kind of scary for a little bit. Um, and then tours started back up and we thought things are going great. Uh, we kept hearing that there were a lot of alternatives and alternate scenarios that could happen if uh, it got to that point. So we weren't really worried. And then the news came out on that Wednesday. It was our reading day right before finals. And so it was just, I didn't believe it at first. I really didn't. Rivera serves as secretary of the Casanova College Student Government Association. She tells me students are paying close attention to the list of schools that the college is forging teach-out agreements with. I asked if she plans to continue her studies. As far as I know, yes, because as of right now, there's not going to be another year of CAS. We are confirmed to have the next semester and then the first session of the summer, and that is it. And I am a junior right now, which um, if you uh, recall... The junior class right now is also the senior class that graduated 2020. So we are losing a senior year once again. So that sucks. Your entire higher education experience has been defined by COVID too. Absolutely. I came to CAS in the middle of college. It was one of the only colleges during the pandemic that was still getting people in person. And a lot of it was virtual masks all the time. This is the first year that we've been able to not have to wear a mask. Uh, many people still do, but we were just starting to get some sort of normalcy from all of that. So that also kind of sucks. How much time do you have right now to apply to another school? Are you confident that you can relocate to another campus for fall 2023? Yeah, so I'm feeling pretty confident about that. Um, part of the teach out agreements with a lot of these institutions is to waive that application deadline. And we were reassured by all of our class advisors um, and our res life staff that they will be working with us and other colleges to be able to get us to transfer. So there's 
there's no really, I'm not really scared about having to go to another college just because I know that I'm going to be able to. They're not leaving it up to us, which I really appreciate. And also this applies to our staff and faculty. Um, I was really interested about what would happen to them because a lot of them, this is their livelihoods and some of them even lived on campus. Um, and I did ask about that during our meeting um, and they said that same to them, they would also uh, have resources and help finding a new job. A lot of these institutions that are offering teach out agreements are also actively looking for faculty and staff. So that was also um, a nice reassuring kind of thing. Have you made a decision? Are you leaning toward any particular institutions at this time? Well, I kind of have a top three in mind. Um, I know as of right now, the colleges that we have official contracts with include Mercy College, um, Excelsior College, SUNY Aniana, Lemoyne, um, and I'm SUNY Aniana is definitely on my top three. Um, I know that also our dean is working to hopefully get most, if not all, of the SUNY colleges to accept students, and I would really like to go to SUNY Cortland if possible. Um, and then there's also SUNY Oswego, which is nearby, and that one um, I've heard is in the works of possibly having a contract along with uh, Syracuse University. What kinds of conversations are you having with your fellow students about this right now? How does everybody feel, especially going into the winter? It's definitely been about a little bit about finals and getting through them because like I mentioned before, this was sprung on us right before finals. And I know that they're, um, they stated the reasoning for this was because they wanted to be as transparent as possible and tell us things as soon as they came in. And this information had gone to them literally that morning. So the vote happened, I think around eight or 9 AM. And then by 11 AM, the email was sent out and, um, having this transparency was part of something that student government asked for because after that article came out and we knew nothing, we wanted to make sure that as soon as they were getting updates, we were knowing about it because we're, it's affecting us. We should know what's going on in our school. Um, so the timing of it was definitely, um, not ideal, necessary, but not ideal. And so it was mostly getting people through finals and just conversations about different colleges. Uh, again, keeping tabs on the ones that are officially having contracts with us. Um, a lot of people that I've talked with that are very upset about this are mostly just grieving right now. The things that they're gonna lose and you know, all of us, at least like my junior class, We've spent all these three years together and now we're going to go to separate places and start basically fresh for just one year. I feel like we are definitely not the luckiest class. Didn't get a senior year, not getting one again, and we have to start anew. And I feel like everybody else, like the sophomore class, and the freshman class, they have more time to establish relationships, to establish themselves on a campus. Um, I think also the extracurriculars that we were involved in. Like I'm involved in at least six organizations and clubs on campus. And now I'm going to go somewhere new and have to build all of that again. And I don't have the time to do that. So that definitely is really rough to kind of accept. And that's been something that I've been discussing with um, my fellow CAS peeps. So what does the SGA want at this time from the college? And is there something that you would like to see in regards to communication or action or anything um, in the short term or long term from the staff at CAS? Um, ideally, it all always comes down to communication. I feel like that's always going to be a thing that appears in every setting. Um, I feel like the college has actually been pretty good about keeping their word that they're going to communicate with us and letting us know. Um, 
what I hope for and expect the most right now is that they keep their word about helping all of us, every single one of us, getting to a new place and these teach out agreements actually benefiting us. Um, part of these teach out agreements are that all of our credits will transfer, that we don't have to pay application fees, that they're going to match our finances because a lot of us went to this school with scholarships and grants and because it was the best school financially for us and so it would be just awful to have to go to a new place and have to pay way more so that was also a source of anxiety for a lot of people um and i'm not sure about the long term honestly there's a lot of people who believe that we may still have a chance there's people still trying to get the word out there and seeing if someone can come and help us but I don't know so I'm going to work with what I do know and I do know that I'm not going to have a next year so I'm going to go off of that I'm going to try to make this next semester the best possible and move on Alaya Rivera is a third-year student and secretary of the Student Government Association at Casanova College in Casanova, New York. The private institution of around 800 students is planning to close after the spring 2023 semester, just a year shy of the college's 200th anniversary. Casanova College has announced teach-out agreements with several regional institutions, both private and public, including Damon University, Elmira College, Excelsior University, Hilbert College, Keuka College, Lemoyne College, the State University of New York College at Oneonta, Utica University, and Wells College. You're listening to the best of our knowledge. This has been The Best of Our Knowledge, a national production of WAMC Northeast Public Radio. Thanks to associate producer Jody Cowan, our executive producer is Dr. Alan Chartok. To hear past episodes, visit our flagship station's website, wamc.org. And until next time, I'm Lucas Willard.